Hi, today we're going to learn about two concepts, uh, precision and accuracy, and counting significant figures. These two concepts are very important when it comes to measurement in chemistry. In the fields of science, engineering, industry, uh, and even statistics, the accuracy of a measure is how close that measurement is to the accepted value. To give an example, if we go into the lab and measure the boiling point of water and we get uh, 100 degrees Celsius, this is accurate because we know for a fact that through many, many experiments, people have obtained 100 degrees Celsius as the boiling point of water. However, if I only got, say, 75 degrees, uh, something is possibly wrong with my thermometer, uh, and uh, this measurement, or the way that I'm reading the thermometer, this measurement is not accurate. This would not be accurate because we know that 100 degrees is the accepted value for the boiling point of water. Whereas precision has to do with the repeatability or reproducibility of a measurement. If I am able to get, um, I go into the lab and I do my uh, experiment and I get, every time I get, uh, 95 degrees for the uh, boiling point of water and I do repeat this three times and every time I get 95 degrees. This measurement is um, somewhat accurate but not completely accurate but it is precise because I have gotten that measurement several times. And if I uh, go into the lab and measure the boiling point of water three times and the first time I get 75 degrees Celsius and the second time I get 85 degrees Celsius uh, and the third time I get 65 degrees Celsius. None of these measurements are uh, precise. Uh, in other words, here it is precise but not completely accurate. Precise but not completely accurate. My second readings are neither accurate nor precise. They are not uh, the accepted value uh, and they were all over the place. And they're not repeatable. But it is possible also to have measurements that are both accurate and precise. In other words, if I go to the lab and repeat the uh, boiling point experiment and I obtain 100 degrees Celsius. All right, so here's an illustration of accuracy and precision. <clears throat> we all know that the bullseye when playing darts is the accepted value. This is what we want. So when I when looking at this, if I throw the darts three times and I they all go to the bullseye, I know that I have achieved both accuracy and precision because I have been able to repeat that a measurement or that uh, throw three times. All right, we come to this one over here on the right, and we look and see that one is in the bull, on the bull side. This is um, outside, and this is outside. So I'm going to say that this is not precise, and somewhat accurate. It's not completely accurate, but it is close, uh, close to being accurate. All right. 
On this one over here, we see that I throw the darts three times, and I, it lands in the same spot. This is precise. I was able to repeat the same um, measurement or the same throw, but it is not accurate because it did not land on where I want it, in the bullseye. So precise. And, but not accurate. Okay, finally, this one over here, it is neither precise because they did not land in the same place, nor accurate because it is not where I desire to be, desire it to be. So this is neither. All right, I hope that the concept of, pre of precision is clear and that you have written it down in your notes. Keep in mind that a measurement is considered valid if it is both accurate and precise. The concept of significant figures is a very important one. It is often used in connection with rounding numbers. For example, when you plug in a number into your calculator, you may get five, six, seven, eight digits. How do you know where to round off? You don't want to use all of those numbers because it is, that is incorrect. So we want to make sure that we understand how to round using the correct number of significant figures. Significant figures can also be called significant digits. So the significant figures of a number or the significant digits of a number are those digits that carry meaning and contribute to its so precision. So what's the point of significant figures? The, first, the best way to illustrate that is to show you three different balances. These three balances are uh, ra arranged according to cost. This is the cheapest balance. This is the next cheapest balance, somewhere in the middle. This is probably about $100. This, is co this costs about $300. This one costs over $1,000. So we're going to see what difference it makes in terms of not only cost, but also what do you get for that cost. So we're going to measure my cutie, one of my favorite fruits, and notice that it says 76.0. So my cheap balance, that's probably about $100, says 76.0 and that's grams. My next balance about $300 76.10 grams. This is my $300 balance the ones that students use. And now I'm going to go to my over $1,000. I'm not sure how much it was, but it, I know it was over $1,000. And I'm going to place my cutie in the little um, glass plate here. And notice that it reads 76.0035. So let's compare. This one, this is the estimated number. You've learned about estimation. This one has three significant figures. This one read to four significant figures. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six significant figures. When we measure, we want to pay attention to the number of significant figures. We also want to pay attention to the fact that when we do calculations, we are only, our measurement is only as good as the least accurate measurement. In order to use significant digits correctly, you must know the rules. The rules are simple. All non-zero digits count. All captive zeros count. All leading zeros don't count trailing zeros, 
count if there is a decimal and do not count if there is no decimal. Pause the video so that you can write these rules. So let me give you an example. All non-zero digits count. Six, five, four. A measurement that has zero, five, four, seven contains four significant digits. All non-zeros, one, two, three, four. All captive zeros count. So if I have the number six, zero, zero, two, one. These are captive zeros, therefore they count. One, two, three, four, five. Five significant digits. All leerings, leading zeros don't count. So if I have zero, 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 one, or let's say I have zero point zero zero one, those leading zeros do not count, so there is one significant digit. It does not mean that these numbers are unimportant. It means that we only count one significant digit, but the number remains 0 0.001. These are placeholders, and they're very important. So if I have a number 0 0.0275, I have three significant digits because the leading zeros do not count, and here I have only one significant digit. All right, trailing zeros. If they have a decimal, they count. So if I have um, 6.000, that is considered, these are considered to be trailing zeros. But there is a decimal, so all of these numbers will count. One, two, three, four. There are four significant digits. However, trailing zeros without a decimal do not count. So if I have the number 5,000, that is only one significant digit, therefore, That if I have the number 5,000, that is one significant digit because there are trailing zeros and there is no decimal. A couple of more examples. I want you to try this with me. Measurement 6.7310. This is a trailing zero, therefore it counts for the significant digits, and all, all non-zero digits count. So the total number of significant digits here is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Total number, 5. Let's try another one. 0 0.0701. These are leading zeros. Leading zeros do not count for significant digits. Therefore, there are 3 significant digits. Let's try another one. Seven, two, zero, 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 zero. These are trailing zeros, but there is no decimal. So therefore, there are only two significant digits. Let us try the following number. 475, Point two seven one zero. There's a decimal. This is a trailing zero. Therefore, it does count. These are not zero digits. They all count for a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven significant digits. Okay, we're going to leave it at that. And uh, we're next. We're going to talk about how to round numbers correctly when we are adding or subtracting or multiplying or dividing.